We were born in 1943, and we are five minutes apart. We had the same cribs. We had, everything was almost alike. We were tied together like this. We had our, our room together, we slept together, and then we wore each other's clothes. That's the way you do it. You make That's your what, clothes go longer. As you get older, you go closer to each other because that's all you have, it's her. We're very close, it's like ESP. If something happens to her, it happens to me. We had a problem or something, we'd call each other and say, did this happen to you? And she said, yeah, it happened to me yesterday. Like, she got a migraine. Oh, no because I'll have a migraine next day. I didn't have my first tremor until I was in my 50s, but I kind of blew it off because, well, maybe it's apprehension or nerves. It started light, and then it started getting, getting heavy like this. Have I got MS? Have I got this? Have I got that? Or have I got Parkinson's or something? I said, I better go check it out. So I went to the doctor and he told me I have essential tremors. Essential tremor is a common neurologic uh, disorder that impacts primarily the upper extremities and results in a tremor when a person makes uh, a motion. So when they're going to, for example, reach an object or control an object, that's when the tremor becomes most prominent. And this is distinct from tremor that you may see, for example, in Parkinson's disease, which typically is a, what we would describe as a resting tremor, a tremor that is present when the person is not moving. The central tremor is a common neurologic disorder and it affects about four million Americans. People with a central tremor can have difficulty uh, eating, buttoning buttons, uh, writing letters, using a computer. It, it can really have a marked impact on a person's ability to, to do common things that we take for granted. I have been friends with Janice and Janet for more than 50 years. It became evident well, when picking up a glass, food and forks were, were difficult to maneuver. I used to work with stained glass and I would cut my fingers to the point they would bleed. When I was cooking, when I would make cookies, the flour would go everywhere. To get a cup of coffee, if you got it to somebody, it was half full. We we'll try and hold our hands. We like try that. to be happy, but sometimes you can't. So you just go into a closet and cry, and then you come back out and put a happy face back on. <laughs> One of the things that always struck me about uh, about both of them really was how well they handled their situation. I was just impressed with the way they do that because they don't let it get them down. Never did let them get it down. So both Janet and Janice had tremor for 20 years, but it became much more severe and debilitating over the past few years, which led them to seek an advanced therapy with DBS. When I met Janet and Janice, we were meeting to discuss the therapy of deep brain stimulation, which is a surgical treatment for essential tremor. It involves making a small hole a little less than the size of a dime, 14 millimeters in diameter, that allows us to gain access to the brain and insert a small wire in which we stimulate a small electrical current into a specific part of the brain called the thalamus. And this results in a normalization of irregular activity that's present in that portion of the brain. When we stimulate in that region, it can result in tremor cessation. We generally decide whether or not somebody needs treatment by actually talking to them and saying, how does this affect your quality of life? Are you having trouble doing the things that you enjoy? Are you able to work? You know, are you able to go out to restaurants? And in fact, 
The central tremor was the first condition for which DBS was approved for use in, in folks that have this abnormal movement and particularly for people that are having disabling movements when they try to do things like use a cup or a fork or when they're trying to do their job. We were kind of hesitant going through all the surgery and everything. At our age, we didn't know. We came here at University of Florida. They went through the process of how it was going to work with the surgery. I think they drilled, didn't they? No, they they gave you a crown, Jan. Oh, <laughs> that's right. They gave you a crown first, and then they did the the procedure. We typically perform the procedure with the patient awake. The reason to do this is because we can get instantaneous feedback about the location of the lead and the effects that the stimulation is having. When you can keep a person awake during a brain surgery, like deep brain stimulation, we're able to actually map the brain. And in essential tremor, it's really important because the difference between a good and a great outcome, or even a side effect, is often just a millimeter. But the neurologist helps to understand the signals to identify the right three-dimensional map so we can put that lead precisely in place and that lead can stay there for many years to suppress tremor and change quality of life for people. How long was it before you saw any results from the surgery? Right away. Right away. We were before in. we even left the surgery room, they made sure we could write our name and draw circles. I said I wanted to go in looking like Rita Hayworth, but if I can write, I, I would love it. And when I got to write my name, I can go to the ballot box and be proud to write my name again. It makes me cry. It's okay. It was wonderful. You just don't know how wonderful it was. Oh, absolute wonderment. It's fun to go out to dinner and not have to open her straw for her. <laughs> I cried myself because she was, she was so stable and uh, it was just uh, as near as I've seen in my life to a miracle. It was miraculous. We go in for tune-ups. We have wires coming down to the implant right here. There are actually four things that we can adjust when we're doing deep brain stimulation programming. We can adjust the electrode configuration. We can adjust the amplitude, which is like the volume. We can adjust the pulse width, and we can adjust the rate, the frequency at which the pulses are delivered. The technology has advanced immensely over the years. From the beginning when we had to use a magnet to turn a device off and on, to being able to use a smartphone, it's just incredible to see the improvements that have occurred over even the past five years. It's affected it so much, I'm happier. My attitude is better, the mood is gone. Your confidence is way up here. <laughs> well, think about it. We can put our makeup on in five minutes. <laughs> That's amazing. I can write my name. I can be like a normal person. It's amazing. We can write Christmas cards now. I can't wait. And well, that, that's thrilling. That is really thrilling to write a card to thank you, to thank the doctor. Dr. Hillard, he was really great. He's our hero. He's our hero.